afternoon, Pastor David. Hey, John. Welcome, everybody, to A Random Moment with Pastor David Unfiltered. Uh, just as you guys know, on Tuesdays, we cover current events. On Thursdays, we cover sometimes it's things from the message you taught uh, from the Wednesday evening service. And this is where I want to go today. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Last night, uh, and you even put a little title on this specific point that you were making, you're referencing uh, doing work without the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And this is what you've quoted, quote, people do great things without the power of the Holy Spirit. And you messaged, uh, you called that running on empty, mm -hmm. which is a cool song from Jackson Brown anyways. <laughs> uh, but you said something that it was a great concern. Yeah. Is this truly a great concern? Pastor I would believe so. I believe that there are quite a number of of uh, people who attend church who are are trying to do works for God uh, in their own flesh and are failing to actually understand how the uh, power uh, of the Holy Spirit has been available, made available to us by the Lord, and that um, to do something for the Lord that is going to last requires that it be in His will and by His power. And so when we begin to market the church or we begin to look at the church as just an organization. And so we go out and we hire people who are experts at various things. You go out and find the best children's minister you can get. You hire professional uh, guitar players, worship leaders, and all of that, professionals. Uh, you, you look for somebody to handle your children's ministry who's got you know their degree in, in, uh, in child education and all. There's nothing wrong with any of that. But sometimes it can be wrong when we think that by bringing in these trained people that that's the same as bringing in people who are an anointed to do those things. Because you can be trained to do quite a number of things. You know that and I know that. There are quite a number of quote unquote counselors who counsel without the wisdom and direction of the Holy Spirit, but they've been trained. They got their masters, they got their doctorates, and they've been trained and they've gone through the variety of things that you need to do in order to be regarded as an accredited, accredited uh, professional counselor. But that doesn't mean that they necessarily are giving wisdom from above. Very often it's, it's not. And so, yeah, last night I was sharing that it's easy for us to run on empty, and I was sharing how that I was coming down from from Big, Big Bear Lake here in California. And uh, as I was coasting, I had put the, uh, the uh, transmission in neutral and just coasted. And I coasted quite a way because those, uh, those who are familiar with uh, the road that takes you up into and down from, from Big Bear know that it's got an incline. And so you can actually go for a few miles, you know, and that's what I did. And I was sharing how that I put it back into gear put my foot down on the gas pedal and um, there was no gas in the in the vehicle. Mm -hmm. So I was traveling at 60, 55 miles an hour, but I was traveling on empty. And there's a lot of people that are traveling in their quote unquote spiritual life, but they're running on empty. And so, yeah, the emphasis last night was that, that we walk in the spirit, that we ask God to fill us with his spirit, you know, that we, might exercise gifts and talents that he gives to us and not simply natural talents, but uh, spiritual talents that he gives to us. And uh, that there are a number of people, I believe, sitting in churches on midweeks or during the, uh, you know, the uh, Sunday morning service who, who aren't even born again, who are convinced that they themselves are saved because they're in church or they try to be good and, and they're trying to basically earn their way into heaven. And I was sharing that in the 50s, that there were those who lived moral lives that even people today in our year um, don't match. You know, in, in the 50s, you could leave your, your keys in your, in your car. You could leave the doors unlocked, windows unlocked. And uh, pagans in the 50s lived more moral lives than, than many Christians or professing Christians in, in our day, you know, the atheists have, uh, I was reading a statistic on divorce, and atheists 
had a lower divorce rate than evangelical Christians. And, and uh, you know, that these things ought not to be so. And so I was sharing with the church yesterday, last night, how that we need to be careful that we don't run on empty. We need the power of the Spirit. And Pastor, you know, as, as, as Christians, as you're you know, much mentioning running on empty, there's, there's no such thing as being half full of the Spirit or being, we're either filled with the Holy Spirit or we're not. Well, we need to, you know, Scripture speaks very often, the book of Acts, I think, especially makes it clear, but also in Ephesians and other places, speaks concerning the filling of the Holy Spirit and the walking in the Spirit. And, uh, you know, there is the baptism of the Holy Spirit that we have received, and uh, yet there is the fillings of the Holy Spirit. And so there's an awareness that we ought to be relying on God and His Holy Spirit and there are times when we'll say, Lord, I, 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 I'm asking for you to just, just to fill me now, you know, and you can see that. There's a phrase you'll see in scripture, and Peter filled with the Spirit spoke and, and all. And so Paul, Paul said, be not drunken, be not drunk with wine, but he said, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. And th that is a call to a continuous action that the Holy Spirit be continually filling us. And so what we ask for, on a daily basis, and I mentioned that to our people last night. I said, you know, wake up in the morning and say, Father, I just need your, your power today, you know, and make that a continual prayer. And, and very often I, I, I will be asking, I ask the Lord, Lord, I, I, just fill me, especially when I'm, I'm sharing or when I'm maybe doing one-on-one -on -one ministry and somebody's sharing with me the situation, I, I will be saying, Father, I need your wisdom and I certainly need your direction and, and em empowerment by your spirit. So yeah, I was encouraging the church because I believe that when the revival that I went through and got saved in called the Jesus Movement occurred, it was a movement that was centered on the, the present relationship we could have with the Spirit of God. And a lot of people have, and maybe some listening now, have substituted activity in church, you know, serving, giving, whatever, traveling on missions, and they have substituted activity for a walk in the spirit. And so uh, I, I see the lack of that. You know, when you see people who are believers who are living in fear of, of COVID, not to say that we shouldn't have wisdom as it relates to that, both you and I have had it, I've had it twice. I do not disregard it. It is a serious and has been serious, of course. But to live in fear, that is, that is not something that, that as a believer I, I should be yielding to. Wisdom, yes. Fear, no. Walk in wisdom, yes. Walk in fear, no. You know, I ask the Lord, you know, give me a, a wisdom and a confidence to, to know you're with me. But Lord, let me not be shackled with the fear of of illness or the fear of death, you know, in an in a an unwise way. There are some in our church who have had lung transplants and and some who are, you know, have comorbidities. And I, I certainly would never be one who says, "Oh, don't uh, be concerned with your health." Of course, there are certain kinds of of concerns we have that should motivate us to protective action. So I do, for example, put on a seat belt. I, I do lock the doors of my house and even in my car because I think there's wisdom in being aware that the world I live in is, uh, is perilous. You know, we're living in evil days. Of course we understand that. But to be afraid constantly, to get angry at people because they're not wearing a mask when masks don't even work. It's been demonstrated that you have to have a certain kind of mask and the masks that people are wearing, the cloth ones, do not work. And yet we see people putting on two masks or just the other day somebody told my wife when she was walking into a store, put on your masks, you know, yeah, these, these uh, Karens, they call them uh, today, you know, we're trying to be the, uh, the health monitors for the world. Those are people who walk in fear and so I think that we daily need to put on the armor of God. We need to ask the Lord to fill us with his spirit. And that's kind of what I was trying to share last night. And, you, it, you know, just I know we have a few minutes left. The way you tied it in last night, you used an illustration that really uh, made, made sense to me. It made sense to a lot of people uh, that 
when we're in Christ and we're walking in the Spirit, we're already victorious. And you yeah. shared an illustration yesterday. Yeah, yeah. If you would, can you please? Yeah, I'll that? close with this story. It is a true story. Um, how uh, we were watching the Super Bowl, and uh, you know I'm a Rams uh, fan. You know I've my dad was a Rams fan. My son's a Rams fan. You know, and so uh, so I was watching the Super Bowl, and I was very happy to see the Rams. But we were losing in the last quarter. There were only six and a half minutes or so to go, and and we were down. And so I was telling Marie, who's really not interested anyway, but she happened to be sitting next to me. I said, you know, the Rams could pull it off, but I don't know that they will. They're not moving the ball. And we were, I was kind of talking and I had put it on pause. And so there's a little over six minutes to go. And uh, as I had put it on pause, I'm talking to Marie and my son, Joseph had come in and, and those kinds of things. So I was interrupted, but you know, you can, you can take it off pause and watch the rest of the game. And so as I'm there on pause, the phone rings. It's my son, David. And I pick it up. I said, hello, Dave. And he says, Super Bowl champs, Dad. And I said, what? He said, yeah, we won. Super Bowl. Are you watching the game? And I said, well, son, um, it's on pause. I said, and uh, right now we're losing. <laughs> I said, so uh, no, I am watching the game, but yes, I have it on pause. And he goes, oh, I'm sorry, Dad. I'm sorry, Dad. And I said, no, that's okay. And, and I'll kind of laugh with him. And then I hung up the phone and I began to watch the game. And frankly, knowing that they won, it still didn't, it's, it didn't ring that they had because we weren't advancing the ball. We weren't, and I knew, I, I, I was saying last night, I knew that had I not been told we won, that I would be going through, you know, uh, tension over this. But knowing that the game was already over and already won, it gave me a peaceful confidence, even a hope. And I was sharing, I said to the church, you know what? We can look like we are losing because the situations around us right now seem to scream that we are. But we know the last chapter of the last book of the Bible and we know in Christ we're victorious. And in the book of Ephesians, Paul has already made that statement. He's already made it clear. We are seated with Christ in the heavenlies. We are already regarded by God as people who are victors because of us being in Jesus Christ. And so, yeah, life is for, for us, it can be like, an, like a paused game <laughs> with a conclusion that's already been settled. And that gives us a confidence that Amen. we can walk in. Yeah, because you can appear that you're losing, but in fact, no, it's just part of the process to victory. And that, was, that illustration was amazing. It worked for me. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, Pastor, thank you so much for sharing and, and giving us some insight on you know, we don't have to run on empty. We have no. the Spirit freely for us and yes. we can walk in the power of yes. the Spirit. Yes. And so thank you, Pastor, for sharing with us. Church family, I want to remind you that we do have our services coming up at 8.30 and 10.45 on Sunday. Uh, Pastor, you're taking us through the book of Mark. Mm -hmm. And uh, invite your friends and family. It'll be a great study. Uh, March 2nd, uh, mark your calendars. We have the Katinas coming out to do our Wednesday evening service. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. They're going to lead worship. Uh, they're going to do a message. And that's a great opportunity to invite friends and family. Oh, absolutely. That. And so uh, thank you guys for tuning in. And Pastor, thank you so much. Right, God bless you guys. <laughs>